were building a hive in a water meter box in someone's front yard. I was called to remove them and here's how I did it. The first step was lifting the lid of the box up. As you can see, there were a ton of bees. They had been starting to build some honeycomb right on the lid of that box, so I gently set it down. There were so many bees, but the most important bee was the queen, so I needed to make sure I got her in the new hive. So I decided to give that top a few shakes and all the bees fell into their new hive. I set down the lid and I would start to look for the queen, hoping that she fell into the box when I gave that lid a few good shakes. I thought I saw her, so I searched a little more. Do you see her? There she is. We got her. These bees started to build a hive on a patio chair and I was called to remove them. The first thing I did was lift the cover of the chair to reveal a beautiful beehive with thousands of honeybees. I started to carefully remove the hive from the side of the chair, always looking for the queen bee every step of the way. As I removed each piece of comb, I put it in wooden frames of the new beehive using rubber bands to secure it for transit so that the bees could use it later on. There was a lot of comb, but also a ton of bees. So I used my hands and started scooping bees into their new hive while looking for the queen. Soon enough, I found her. Do you see her in there? She's the largest bee in the hive. There she is. I put her into the new hive and all the other bees started to go right in since they wanted to be with their queen. And this was all actually on the second story of a house. So I used some rope to lower the hive to the ground and I saved the bees. I got a call to rescue a swarm of bees and here's how I did it. When I showed up, I found a beautiful swarm hanging off the side of a branch. So I set up their temporary transit hive and I used my garden shears to carefully cut through the branch they were hanging on. When honeybees are in swarms like this, it means they're looking for a new place to live and just taking a little break on their search for another hive. This is because the queen bee is actually a terrible flyer and she needs some rest while traveling. Swarms of bees tend to be very docile since they don't have resources like brood or honey to defend. So to get the bees and the queen directly in the new hive as quickly and carefully as possible, I gave the branch a few good shakes and the colony fell right in. Bees have pretty tough exoskeletons so the short drop doesn't harm them at all. They were happy to have a new place to live and started to settle in the hive. So I closed up the hive and it was another successful day of saving the bee. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. I can't dab you up until you wash your hands. Cause you might got some type of virus on your hands. I got a call to remove a colony of bees from a compost bin and here's how I did it. The colony had been there for months and there were tens of thousands of bees. So I started to carefully move the comb structure from the bin into a temporary travel hive. I put the comb into frames using rubber bands to secure it for transit. Then I started to get the bees into the temporary hive by scooping them up with my hands. These bees were pretty gentle and did not try to sting me as I worked with care and intention, all while looking for the queen bee who is the largest bee in the colony. After I removed a lot of the worker bees, I suddenly saw the queen crawling on the side of the bin. So I put her in a clip to keep her safe. There she is. I put the queen in the new hive and all the other bees started to follow her scent. So I closed up the hive, I loaded it into my truck to take them to their new home, and it was another successful day of saving the bees. I got a call to remove a colony of bees from this backyard compost bin and here's how I did it. First, I started to carefully remove the comb structure of the hive. I fit the pieces of comb that had baby bees and the bees' food into wooden frames. Next, it was time to start scooping bees into the new hive. I always wear protective equipment when I need to, but since I work with bees almost every day, I've learned to read their behavior and could tell that these bees, like most honey bees, were very gentle and would not try to sting me. So I kept removing comb and removing bees from the bin all while looking for the queen bee. After I removed most of the bees, I saw the queen crawling up the side of the bin, so I put her in a clip to keep her safe. She's the largest bee in the colony, which makes her a little easier to find. There she is. 
I put the queen in the new hive and all the other bees started to follow her in. I had to get a bigger hive because there were so many bees, but after most of them went in the hive, I closed it up and carried it back to my truck and it was another great day of saving the bees. After I rescue a colony of bees, I drive home with them and I put their hive in my main apiary, which also happens to be in my backyard. After I unload them from my truck, I carefully set their hive on a stand. Then I make sure they have everything they need and I let the bees settle into their new home. A few days later, I open the hive to check on them. Here you can see all of the rubber bands I used during the hive removal process. The bees will attach the comb structure from the original hive into the wooden frames of the new hive. Sometimes they'll even use the rubber bands as building guides or as scaffolding to help them build more comb. When the bees have secured the comb into the frames, they'll chew through the rubber bands and drag them out of the hive. And now the bees can continue the important work they do in peace. Here's how I removed a beehive from a backyard shed. The bees were living under the floor. I found the hive entrance, but to see the size and location, I used my thermal camera. Then I cut into the floor where the bees were located. I carefully lifted the piece I cut out and discovered a beautiful hive full of honey. Since the bees were gentle and it was over 100 degrees out, I took off my veil, enjoyed some fresh honey, and went to work removing bees. I scooped the bees into a temporary travel hive while looking for the queen. As a professional beekeeper, I've learned how to read the bees' behavior and could tell that these bees would not sting me. Next, I removed the comb structure of the hive that had baby bees and food, and I put it into frames so that the bees would have everything they need in their new home. Suddenly, I saw the queen surrounded by her attendant bees. I put her in a clip to keep her safe and all of the other bees followed her into the new hive. So I closed up the hive, carefully picked it up, loaded it into my truck to take the bees to their new home and it was another great day of saving the bees. If a colony needs a new queen bee, one thing I can do is to order a queen from a bee breeder and get the new queen delivered to me in the mail. The queen arrives in a little cage with her attendant bees and a bit of candy for food. Then I introduce the queen to the colony to see if they will accept her. If they don't like her, they will kill her almost immediately. But if they do like her, they will start to surround her and take care of her like they're doing here. The queen bee doesn't do anything for herself so that she can focus on her one job, laying eggs. She has a group of attendant bees that follows her everywhere. They clean her and feed her and take care of all of her needs. Bees were living in this water meter and I was called to remove them. So I lifted the cover to reveal a beautiful hive. The bees hadn't been there for very long, but they had already built a lot of comb. The comb had eggs and baby bees, which let me know that the colony had a healthy queen. There was also pollen and nectar, but there was barely any honey yet. I put the comb into frames of the new hive so the bees would have everything they need after I moved them. I always wear protective gear when I need to, but these bees were very gentle and did not sting me. After I removed all of the comb, I started scooping bees into the new hive with my hands. As I was scooping bees, I noticed that the bees were going straight into the new hive, which let me know that the queen was probably already in there, so I gave the bees some smoke to move them a little quicker. Just like you and I do, bees move away from smoke, so as I used my smoker, the bees marched out of the old hive and into the new one to follow their queen. I waited for all the bees to get into their new hive, then I closed up the hive, loaded it into my truck, and it was another great day of saving the bees.